Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at translation of financial statement. And this is part one of four. In other words, I'm going to start this part, explain the concept that we need to explain, the basic concepts. Then we're going to move into three other sessions, working examples to illustrate the concepts. But it's very important that you understand the concepts in this session before you, we proceed. This topic is covered in an advanced accounting course or an international accounting course. Also, it's covered on the CPA exam and maybe on the CMA exam as well. For more lectures, you can go to my website, farhatlectures.com, but in this session, we will focus on this specific topic. So what is the big picture here? Let's start with the big picture. What we are doing is we are translating financial statement. And for the purpose of this session, I'm going to be US-centric. In other words, I'm going to assume that my base is the United States. Therefore, what happened is this. U.S. companies, many U.S. companies, most U.S. companies, Cisco, Coca-Cola, McDonald, they operate overseas. So they have operations in Mexico, they have operation in South America, they have operation in Russia, they have operation in Canada, so on and so forth. Or they might have branches or subsidiaries, or they might have investments in those countries. So what's going to happen is this. When the U.S. company, when MCD, when McDonald, when McDonald report their numbers to the shareholders, they have to use US dollars. So what we have to do, we have to translate the financial statements from the foreign subsidiary, from the foreign branch into US dollar using US dollar, because that's going to be the uniform, the monetary unit that we're going to be using. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. So US company may be involved in foreign operation through the operation of branch, subsidiary, or investee company. What's going to happen is this. Accounts of the foreign activities maintained in the foreign currency must be restated into U.S. dollars. So things will make sense. You cannot combine euros with U.S. dollar. You cannot add the numbers. You have to restate them before you add them. You cannot, you cannot add Japanese yen to U.S. dollar. You have to do some type of a restatement okay, before you combine them or consolidate them um, in one financial statement. So that's the first thing. So... What we have to do is this. We have to understand that we have a control over a subsidiary when we own, okay, directly or indirectly, a controlling interest. How do we define a controlling interest? Usually more than 51%. Some exceptions when we don't intend to control or the control is temporary, then we don't have to uh, uh, consolidate or the control does not really rest with the company. And that could be if there's any restriction by the, by the hosting government from from allowing us from not taking withdrawals out or if there's any exchange restriction simply put here's another picture another big picture um what we're doing is the conversion from one currency into the currency of the parent company again we're going to be always assuming it's a u.s company the process is called the translation so basically we're translating the financial statements so we have financial statements in euro and we're going to go ahead and translate them into u.s dollar now what do we use when we translate them which exchange rate we could use the current we could use the historical we can use the also the average rate the weighted average so those rates we're going to be talking a little bit more about later there are specific rules when do we use which rate now this translation process we have two types of we have two methods of translation two methods of translation one is called remeasurement and one is called translation that's all what I'm going to talk about today, uh, right now. You're going to see the slide again once I go over the explanation. We go back and we say, okay, this is what remeasurement is, and this is what translation is. Don't worry about this. We're going to go back and uh, cover those in details after we go our, after we go through the big picture, explaining when do we use remeasurement, when do we use translation. So it all depends on something called the functional currency. There's there's this function functional currency currency concept and this is what we need to spend maybe five to ten minutes explaining or maybe a little bit more about this functional currency because depending on the functional currency we're either going to use remeasurement or translation depending on the on the currency okay so this is an important concept also on the cpa exam so when you are tested on the cpa exam they focus on do you know what's the functional currency because if you know the functional currency you would know if you would need to use remeasurement or translation so how do we know the functional currency? How do we how do we know what the functional currency is? Okay, the functional currency 
It depends on many factors, but usually some economic indicators will tell us what the functional currency is. Well, how is our cash flow? How do we prepare our cash flow statement? How, how do we make payment to our suppliers? How do we uh, receive the most of our sales? What, what is the sales prices? What's our sales market? What is our payment to key employees? Expenses, cost of goods sold. How, we, how do we finance our company within the local market? Okay, intercompany transactions. So all of those will help us determine what's the functional currency. So if we're reporting in Canada, and if they are using Canadian dollar to run their transaction, then the functional currency is a Canadian dollar. If we are working in Mexico, if the subsidiary in Mexico, and they pay their employees with Mexican pesos, they receive uh, money from the customers in uh, in, Mex in Mexican pesos, they do their banking in Mexican pesos, there, so therefore it's the functional currency, okay? So, but here's what's gonna happen. The functional currency, generally speaking, not generally speaking, it may be the local currency of the foreign entity, but it could be something else. It could be the US dollar, or it could be the currency of a third country. So I'm gonna go over three, those three scenarios using a Canadian example. So let's start with the first, the most normal scenario, okay? And what's the first normal scenario? It's something like this. Here, here's the first scenario. We have a subsidiary or a branch that's operating in Canada in Alberta. It's operating right here. It's a U.S. branch, okay? It's a U.S. branch, but guess what? What they do is they process all their transaction, their payment, their receipts, their bank, and all in Canadian dollar. So if I ask you, what is the cur what's the functional currency of this U.S. branch? And this is a McDonald. Okay, what is the what is the currency? Well, the currency is the functional currency is the Canadian dollar. So the the local currency is the functional currency. So here's what's going to happen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be drawing a graph here. Okay, so. First, we're gonna need to determine the functional currency. So what is the, determine the functional currency? So there we go. So I'm gonna start to draw some graph here. Determine the functional currency, FC. Okay, so now what we did is we, we determined the functional currency. What did we say the functional currency is? We say the functional currency is the uh, local, I'm gonna call it the foreign, I'm gonna call it the local currency. The functional currency here is the local currency. Local currency. Well, so determine the functional currency. The functional currency uh, is the local currency. What do we do if the functional currency, this is, so determine the functional currency, and it happens to be it's the local currency. Then under those circumstances, what we do we use the method called translation. We use the translation method. We use the translation method. The translation method, I'm gonna add some notes here, uses the current rate method. Just write these down, current rate method. And I want you to write one more thing. When we make the adjustment, it goes on the balance sheet. So it may not make a lot of sense to you, but just write this stuff down. So if we happen to have this company, this 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 uh, this branch of McDonald operating in Alberta, what's going to happen when we do the translation? We're going to be using since the the since the functional currency is the local currency, we're going to be using. The translation method, remember we have two methods of translation. This is one and this is two. We're going to be using this translation method. And this translation method, translation, it uses the current rate method and the adjustment goes to the balance sheet. That's all that you have to know for now. We'll see what it means later. Okay, so this is one scenario. And this is mostly, you'd say, I would say this is the normal scenario. It doesn't have to be normal, but I'm just gonna call it normal in the sense that if you're operating in a foreign country, most of the time, the functional currency, most of the time, it's it's in the local currency. Okay, that's fine. Now, what could be another scenario? So that's this is one scenario. So here, 
here the currency is US dollar okay let's assume now another another scenario again between the US and Canada which is the US is the parent company and Canada is the foreign country but here's what's gonna happen I'm gonna make this a little bit interesting let's assume we are operating a McDonald I believe Niagara Falls if my if my geography is good falls right here falls right here in this red dot so this is Niagara Falls so we have a McDonald here in Niagara Falls I think it's right here someplace here please don't uh, grade me on geography okay so we have this um, this McDonald's is operating right on the border the Niagara Falls the Canadian side and guess what this McDonald's get all their supplies from the state of New York okay so th they pay their supplies or their employees are US employees so they want to pay they want to be paid in US dollar or their management is US management and uh, what else uh, the financing comes from the US um, the sales is they only accept US dollar okay so just making this example up so here's what's gonna happen what's gonna happen here is we are operating in Canada but the functional currency is the US dollar not the Canadian dollar for this McDonald so let's go back to this map okay now determine the foreign currency in this situation the answer is um, is it's not the local currency so it's not the local currency no so the foreign currency is not okay so we said yes now the foreign currency is not so the foreign cur the local currency is not the functional currency here so what is the what is the currency then well the functional currency here well obviously you know it the functional currency here is the US dollar the US dollar okay because it's not the local currency what happened if the functional currency is the US dollar if the functional currency is the US dollar what's gonna happen is we need to use the remeasurement remeasurement method and don't worry what remeasurement is for now and the reason is because we're gonna see what it means later okay we're gonna be using the remeasurement remeasurement method and the remeasurement method just write this down it uses the temporal method and don't worry about that okay it's called the remeasurement method it uses the temporal method and any adjustment goes to the income statement so this is our kind of basically second second scenario okay so now the the functional currency is the US dollar but we're operating in Canada therefore we cannot use the translation we have to use the remeasurement what is remeasurement don't worry we'll talk about remeasurement shortly how do we do re the remeasurement okay so are these the only two scenarios not at all not at all let's go back to the map and let's go back to the map and draw another scenario now third scenario could be is this here's what the third scenario is McDonald operating in Canada and they're operating in Quebec specifically in Montreal and if you know anything about oh, no, in Quebec City actually Montreal they're they're okay with they're a little bit more uh, they're not as uh, radical as the Quebec City they're operating in Quebec City so it's so it's a McDonald it's a US company operating in Canada but since and since Quebec City they're very French oriented I'm just making the, making up this example to illustrate the point okay and they are very you know they're very Frenchy they uh, all the signs are in French if you ever visited Quebec City guess what the, the all the transactions so in that city in, in Quebec City McDonald they ex, they the the exchange is in euro because they want to follow the friends so here we go so this is a so it's a US company operating in Canada but the currency is not the Canadian dollar the currency is a euro so the currency basically is a third country the currency of a third country okay a currency again I made this example up now when would that happen it in the real world this would happen if you're operating in a third world country and uh, the currency is not very stable therefore what you would do it, uh, is you would use another another currency to operate 
Okay, but I'm just giving you this example so you would so you would understand it. So you would understand it. So the third scenario is this, and this is like kind of it requires most of the work. So, so now what's going to happen is this: the uh, the uh, the the uh, functional currency is not U.S. dollar. So it's not the it's not the local currency and it's not the U.S. dollar. So it's a third currency. So there we go. So now we have a third currency. So the functional currency here, it's not the local currency. So no for no no for local currency, no for this. It's not it's not the local currency. No for U.S. dollar. It's a third country, a third country foreign currency. It's the euro. So what do we have to do if that's the case? Here's what we have to do. If it's a third country, then we have to do two things. First, we have to remeasure the functional currency. Now we have two steps. We have to remeasure. Two, functional currency, okay, using the temporal method. Okay, so first we have to remeasure to the functional currency. Then from the functional currency, we have to translate translate to US dollar using the current rate method. So here we are we are going through two steps. First, we remeasure to functional currency using the temporal method. Then from the functional currency, we translate to the US dollar. Wow, 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 wow. Are we going to work an example? Sure, just those are the methods. So here we're using kind of both methods. We're using both methods. So, so let's uh, recap basically what we just said. The functional currency could be the local currency of the foreign entity, which is that's the most normal scenario. McDonald operating in Canada, every, all their cash flow is in Canadian dollar, or their sales in Canadian dollar, or their cost of goods sold in Canadian dollar. Or they are operating right on the border. And they don't have to be operating on the border, but I'm just making this up to make it re kind of easy for you to relate to. They're operating in Niagara Falls. The US dollar dominate their transaction because most of their customers are US. Or they're operating in Canada, but, but, the, but the subsidiary or the, uh, uh, or the uh, investee is using a third country currency, the Euro in that situation. Now, let's go back and actually, I'm going to add one more scenario here, which is we did not talk about. Foreign, foreign entity operate in a highly inflationary economy. So here we go. So let's go back to the drawing board here. And now I'm going to draw a kind of a third scenario if you would like to. If, if, here's what's going to happen. Now, we, we're okay with this. So I'm going to just draw a line here. So I'm going to draw a line right here. Okay, now, if the foreign economy is highly inflationary. So let's assume the foreign economy is inflationary and highly inflationary, not only inflationary, highly inflationary, which is highly, I'm going to put highly. And how do we define it's highly inflationary? If in the past three years, the cumulative inflation is more than 100%. Simply put, in year one, they had 30% inflation. In year two, it went up to 60%. And in year three, it now it's 110%. So in the past three years, the, the inflation exceeds 100%. At this point, at this point, guess what? We consider the functional currency as the US dollar. The functional currency is the US dollar. Therefore, if the functional currency is the US dollar, we use the remeasurement method the remeasurement re method, which is the temporal method, okay? So if it's highly inflationary, uh, we use the remeasurement re method. And it, nowadays, only like maybe few countries are, are highly inflationary countries. Venezuela could be one of them. Um, some countries in Central Africa, they have high inflation. At some point in time, Argentina was highly inflationary country. So the board believes, GAP believe, that the currency of a country that has highly inflationary economy has lost its utility as a store of value and cannot be a functional, functional measuring unit. So what we have to do, we consider the US dollar as a functional currency. And again, we're going to work, we're not going to work an example with this, just know this. And we use the remeasurement method. Just to tell you how extreme inflation can be in certain countries. At some point, I don't believe it was in the 80s or 90s, I don't know when in Argentina, you would you would order a meal and they will not guarantee the price by the end of the meal. Because by the end of the meals, all the ingredient has 
you know the price of the ingredients so you you ordered a uh, a salad I'm, I'm being extreme here to make the point and they don't tell you what the price is because they don't know what the price is because they did not receive the prices for today so their supplier did not show up okay so that's how when there's inflation prices are not stable therefore you cannot use you have to use the parent company the US dollar as the uh, currency this means the foreign financial statement should be translated using the temporal method which is using the re measurement re measurement method remember once you once you see the word temporal it means the re measurement so connect those two together connect those two together temporal and re measurement okay so let's go back through this scenario so accounted stated and local currency of a foreign entity if the economy is highly inflationary the functional currency is the US dollar so we ignore the we ignore the currency that they're working with we consider the functional currency is the US dollar and we remeasure using the US you use the US dollar using the temporal method and any adjustment goes to the income statement if the economy is not inflationary which is most of the time what's going to happen we need to determine the functional currency for the economic indicators by knowing what's the majority of their transaction with the, their main transaction like sales cost of goods sold payment to the to key employees if the functional currency is the local currency as I said like you are operating in Canada and everything is in Canadian dollar then you translate the US dollar using the current rate and all adjustments goes to the balance sheet and to OCI if it's if they're not using the foreign if they're not using the local currency if they're using the US dollar like a McDonald operating in Niagara Falls then what's going to happen what's going to happen is we remeasure to US dollar using the temporal method if they are not using the US dollar if they're using now a third currency here is they're, they're using a third country currency and this scenario is McDonald operating in Quebec City and Quebec City wants to follow the French the French are using the euros they only accept and they make payments in euros then what's going to happen you have you remeasure the functional currency using the temporal method then you use the use you use the uh, you you translate the US dollar to the parent company using the current method so here you have basically two steps okay so now let's go back to translation and remeasurement what is translation okay the two method accounts measured in the functional currency are translated into the reporting currency using the current rate method again we did not talk about the current rate so basically taking the basically translating the language of from French to English you're translating the currency from their currency to the to the parent company currency but using the current method now what is the current method you're going to see what the current method is you have specific rules about the current method but basically translation when you use remeasurement if a foreign entity does not maintain its record in the functional currency basically their local currency or the US dollar the local currency accounts are remeasured into the functional currency using the temporal method remeasurement is the process of translating the account of the foreign entity into the functional currency when they are stated in another currency and we're going to see this once we do the remeasurement so the measurement sometimes it takes two steps every time you hear the word translation you're going to be using the current method and the adjustment goes on the balance sheet every time we said we're going to be doing remeasurement we're going to be using the temporal method and the adjustment goes on the income statement so basically we only use the uh, current method only when that's like kind of a, the, the, the normal method the normal and in, in a business sense where you're, you're operating in a foreign country and the local currency of that foreign country is the functional currency otherwise if it's the US dollar you remeasure if it's something other than the US dollar and other than the functional currency you have to remeasure then you have to translate you have two steps are we going to work examples yes we will so don't worry about this just understand when do we use what because on the CPA exam they're going to test you about this now let's talk a little bit more about the uh, translation method the current method remember every time we use we said it's translation we're using the translation method it means we're going to be using the current method and the adjustment goes on the balance sheet into OCI so how do we translate using the translation method so this is the method so when we trend when we convert current assets and current liability which exchange rate do we use we use current exchange rate when we convert paid in capital we use historical rate when we when we convert beginning retained earnings something you have to memorize 
we will use the ending balance of the prior year. That's the beginning earn, uh, retained earning. Dividend, we, yes, we have to use historical rate when dividend is declared. Revenues and expenses, we have to use the average exchange rate. Why? Because sales and sales are taking place throughout the year. The cumulative translation adjustment goes into the balance sheet, goes into the balance sheet. When we make the adjustment at the end, and you will see when we work the example, it goes on the balance sheet. Current year translation adjustment, it goes into other other comprehensive income on the balance sheet. Now, if you, if you are using the temporal method, or which is the translation method, which is the remeasurement method, I'm sorry, the re remeasurement translation method, we use the temporal method, and the adjustment goes on the income statement. Here, when you convert monetary assets and liability, which is a ca cash, account receivable, accounts payable, investments, anything that's monetary asset and liabilities, investments, you would use the current exchange rate. Assets and liabilities carried at historical cost, you would use the historical exchange rate. Asset and liabilities carried at current values, if you have anything at current values, then you have to use the current exchange rate. Revenues and expenses related to assets and liabilities translated at historical rate, like if you have a long-term asset, you're going to have depreciation, which is revenues and expenses. Our, um, depreciation expense is, a, is an expense related to a historical asset. Therefore, you would use the historical rate. Other revenues and expenses other than those pay related to the historical rate, they are exchanged using the uh, transaction date. And what's going to happen, since you may not be able to keep track of the transaction date, you would use an average rate. So this is what we mean by temporal method. How do you do the translation? Which exchange rate do you use? And this is the current rate method. Which, trans which, current, which exchange rate do you use when you actually do the translation? So this is basically the starting point, the starting point of things. Things are going to get a little bit more involved to do the actual translation. But the point here is when do we use the temporal temporal method and when do we use the current rate method so when do we use the remeasurement and when do we use the translation method when do we use those two methods okay again so don't confuse them when you think of translation translation method you use the current method when you think of remeasurement method you would think you would think of the temporal method sometimes you have to use both at the same time when situation is a little bit involved okay so let's take a look at this example just to see uh, how it works Indicator that the local currency is also the functional currency include all the following except. So there's three good answers and one wrong answer. The majority of cash flow are in the local currency. Is this, is this a determination of the functional currency? Of course it is. So that's out. Sales prices are determined by local market condition. Sure, your sales is based on the local market. That's going to tell you, if you what your functional currency is. Financing is generally from the parent company or guaranteed by the parent company. Well, if they're, if they're going to be sending you money, you're, you're going to exchange them. And if it's only guaranteeing the money, it doesn't, mean, doesn't make a difference if it's the functional currency or not. So this is our hold on this. Production costs and expenses are determined by the local condition. Well, that's going to tell you this is one of the main factors if it's a functional currency or not. But financing, it, it says it generally, generally from the parent company. So sometimes it comes from the parent company or guaranteed. Guaranteed doesn't mean anything if they don't send you the money. Okay, but financing will definitely is the weakest one. So all the following will will help you determine the functional currency, but financing doesn't really doesn't really. Obviously, in the next session, we have to work examples. We have to show you how the current method work. We have to show you how the re, um, the temporal method work, which is the remeasurement and the translation using actual numbers. Specifically, we're going to be focusing the most important part of it because if you notice here kind of basically take one number multiplied by the exchange rate as long as you have this list but we're going to also talk about how do we reconcile retained earning and it's going to be the most interesting part and when we work the example if you have any questions any comments by all means email me if you want more lectures please visit my website and if you do so please consider donating thank you very much and if you're studying for your cpa exam as always study hard it's worth it